and today we're making concrete. So here we've made a formwork, uh, which is essentially these steel girders, which have been put in place and held by these pins. So if you can see them on the outside. And then basically the idea is that you level that off and then we've got a rebar in the middle, which is this over here. And this allows the concrete to have some structural stability. Uh, you'll also notice that the rebar is cut just slightly in from the outside. And the reason for that is so that the rust doesn't leak out to the concrete and visible on the outside. We've been working with HESCO. Um, so essentially these can be put up as square structures and they come in different sizes so you can put them on top of each other and one of their primary uses is to stop projectiles from coming into different areas so you can fill them with say sand or some small rocks um, and essentially different bits that you've got in the area soil for example and the idea being that projectiles stop and uh, the, the bullets or projectiles from uh, penetrating your area so they can be used for that and um, they set up really quickly we've just done it just now and put them away quite quickly as well and uh, you'd usually use plant machinery to uh, fill them rather than by hand because it'd take ages we are looking at trenches so what we're doing at the moment is filling sandbags now whilst that doesn't seem very complicated um, it's important or it's imperative really that we get them filled exactly right every time uh, not only that but they need to be constructed in a really uh, specific format it's just to make sure if you can see here that they're overlapped and then they switch every time you put one layer on top of the other just to make sure they're as rigid as possible and that they will withstand whatever comes at them. We've been constructing trenches. So here we have the shelter bay and here we have the firing bay just here. And you can see in this kind of trench we would have 360 covers. So there's another firing bay on the other side. Here we've used, used corrugated iron and the idea being that we overlap the corrugated iron and here we've got some pickets which are then wind lashed to another picket on the other side to make sure basically that the sides don't come and, and fall in and this allows you to have a firing position here but also some cover from incoming artillery or if people are going up over the top of your shelter what we're doing is fencing so we're starting off by doing low wire entanglement so the idea being that you use these stapled gloves to try and handle the barbed wire so you're being as safe as possible and then you put this in a random order around the trees in an area that you may want to channel the enemy down so at the end you may want to put a trip flare for example or you may want to also blockade a building so keeping this building and the doors for example nice and safe so we're moving on to more fencing later on a really long day and I'm quite tired actually. One of the negatives uh, about today is that we had to function really quickly and efficiently as a team and those are things that we hadn't quite got right so there were things to do with the fencing that we hadn't quite got the pickets orientated correctly for example and whilst we're still learning and still making a few mistakes it's also quite frustrating. Positive uh, enjoyable parts of today um, learning how trenches are built. I hadn't realised the extent of different trenches and how each one of them has it, its different purpose. Have I been treated any differently today um, being a woman on course? Um, I would say definitely not. So all of the jobs today required high degrees of accuracy and speed and everyone had their different jobs. So, you know, some people had to lay out the pickets for the fencing, for example, and some people had to lay, lay the barbed wire. So wh whatever job you were doing, you know, everyone was important to the overall process and the team, what the team was working towards ultimately. In terms of rating, I'd give today a 5 out of 10. So given this is the worst day for me on course so far, uh, that's still not too bad. Um, but I haven't quite enjoyed it as I have really enjoyed the rest of the days. Um, so let's hope tomorrow is a higher score.